What's going on everyone? This is Kevin here, coming at you with camera tips and tricks for the Samsung Galaxy A23. So stay tuned if you want to get the most out of all the various cameras on your device. Now with the Galaxy A23, we have an 8 megapixel front facing camera, and then on the back of the phone, we have a quad camera setup with a 50 megapixel main camera, a 5 megapixel ultra wide angle camera that can capture images at up to 123 degrees, a 2 megapixel macro camera for close up images, and a 2 megapixel depth sensing camera to assist with portrait mode. So we have quite a few options when it comes to all the various cameras here on the device. Now the first thing that I want to show you is how to get grid lines on the camera app. Now I remember way back in school, they taught us about this concept called the rule of thirds. Now you can actually get the grid lines to achieve this by going up to the settings, which is this gear in the corner, then scrolling down until you see grid lines. And then we'll go back, and now you can see in the viewfinder, it is now divided up into various thirds, so we have nine different squares here. So essentially with this, we can then use the rule of thirds to capture better looking images. So I'm definitely curious to know if this is something you've tried before, and if it's something you plan on using with your A23. The next thing I want to show you is a really quick and easy way to pull up the camera app at any time. Now you can actually do this by just double pressing on the power button. So let's give that a try. So you can see, double pressing on the power button immediately pulls up the camera app. You can do this anywhere throughout the operating system. And in addition to that, you can even have the display off and do the same thing, and it will bring you right to the camera app. Now this uses a feature that's known as side key, and essentially with side key, you can customize this to actually pull up any camera app or any other app of your choosing. Now to get to this, you're gonna pull down the shade, go to the gear in the upper right corner, go to search, Type in side key, and then you'll see right there side key, and then go here. And you'll see that by default, quick launch camera is enabled with side key. Now if you want to, you can have it open up any app of your choosing. So again, if there's a different camera app or any app, you can then go through your list of apps and then choose what you want that to be set to. So maybe there's a third party camera app or Snapchat, for example, that I'd rather have this pull up then I can easily switch to that to customize this to better suit my needs. Now when taking photos with the Galaxy A23, you might notice that your images seem to be taking up a lot of space on the phone. Now thankfully, Samsung does have an option so that you can capture images at a lower file size. So go to the settings, and then you'll see right here, high efficiency pictures. So essentially, it uses a high efficiency image format so that you have smaller file sizes for all your various pictures. Now it is possible that you might run into incompatibility issues with various apps and websites with photos taken when in this mode, but I definitely think it's worth a try if you do find yourself constantly filling up all the space in your phone by taking a bunch of pictures. Now in the camera settings, you'll see another option here called shooting methods. So by going here, you'll see that we have three different options. Now the first one says, press volume keys to take a picture or record video. So this is how it is enabled by default. So when you're in the camera app, you can use volume up or volume down to capture an image or capture a video. Now going back to this, we actually have two other options as well. So you can use the volume button to zoom in or out, or if you want to, you can have it actually control the volume of the entire phone system. So we'll do zoom in and out. We'll go back and then now volume up zooms in and then volume down zooms out. So certainly something worth trying out. Actually, if you really zoom out, it will switch you over to the ultra wide angle camera, which is another really cool and convenient thing there. So this might be something worth trying out if you find yourself not really using the volume buttons as a shutter button. Now going back to the shooting methods menu, you'll see also an option called floating shutter button. So essentially once that's enabled, you can take pictures with an extra shutter button that you can move anywhere on the screen. So let's go back to the camera interface. And then you'll see right here, we do indeed have a shutter button that is pretty much floating around. So you can put this anywhere you want, and then it serves as a typical shutter button, just like the normal one. And then we have the final option here called show palm. So show your palm to the camera to take selfies or start recording video selfies. So let's enable that. Let's go back. Let's flip around to the front facing camera. And then now I'm gonna show my palm. There we go, just took the selfie. Let's try that out one more time. There we go, so that does indeed work. I'm not sure how useful it is, but it does work. The next feature I wanna show you is how to swipe the shutter for burst shots. 
So essentially, you're going to swipe down on the shutter button, and then from there, it just took four images very quickly. So we'll do that one more time. And there we go, so very easy. Now also in the camera settings, you can actually switch this to create a GIF or GIF image, depending on how you pronounce it. So I have that now enabled, and then now I'm gonna swipe down, and we're now capturing a GIF. There we go, let's take a look at that. And you can see that is indeed a GIF image, so that was a very quick and easy way to create one. Now moving on, you'll see up top here, we have some different options. So the first one is right here, this will give you different choices for aspect ratio. So you can do the full display of the phone so that your pictures will be essentially 20 by nine. You can also do one by one, so that's square. We can go over to nine by 16 if you want things to be a bit wider. And we can also go back to three by four. And then there's also three by four, but in 50 megapixels. So if you do wanna take the full 50 megapixel photos that this phone is capable of taking, then you will have to switch over to this mode. And then also up here is the timer. So we have options for two seconds, five seconds, 10 seconds, and then off. Now you'll see in the camera app, we have various options down here. So portrait mode, photo, video, and more. Now you can actually customize this if you want. So we'll go over to more, and you'll see here that we do have some different options. So let's say we want macro to be in between photo and video. So essentially tap on that plus button, and then take macro or whatever you wanna put down here, and then just drop it right in there, and then go to save. And then now, you'll see that we can easily switch over to the macro mode right from the photo mode. So that's really awesome. I definitely like that we can customize this as it's never really great to be stuck with any sort of default configuration. And then if you do wanna move this back to where it was, you can just drag it back. And you can even take portrait mode out of there if you do want to. It looks like photo and video are grayed out, so unfortunately you can't do that. But again, it's really nice that we can customize this so that we can get everything to be exactly how we want it to be. Now, if you do find yourself constantly changing various settings in the camera app, and you want it to always stay that way whenever you pull the camera app back up instead of going back to the default, there actually is a way to make this possible. So you're gonna go to the settings, and then you are gonna go down to settings to keep, and you'll see that we have some different options. So the first one is camera mode, so we'll start the camera in the last mode used, such as video, for example, instead of always starting in photo mode. We also have selfie angle, so keep the angle you last used for the front camera. The camera will no longer switch between normal and wide angles based on the number of people in the selfie, so that's something worth considering. And then finally, we do have the option to keep various filters. So if you do apply a filter and you want that filter to essentially be the default, then you can actually keep that so that you don't have to keep switching back to it. But this concludes camera tips and tricks for the Samsung Galaxy A23. If you enjoyed the video and learned something new, then definitely hit that thumbs up button. Also make sure to sub to the channel and check out all my other content about the Galaxy A23 and pretty much all the other Samsung Galaxy A series devices. But I hope you have a great rest of your day and I will see you in the next video.